Hello, beautiful people. It's Sunday night, and the name of the show is Intuitive Inc., and I am Servette Hassan. And for some lovely, blessed reason, we come up with some amazing guests week after week after week, and we will not fail you again. Today, I have on the line Dr. Mary Friedman Ryan, who, um, she's fascinating. The name of the book is called Healing Anxiety. Are you listening, people? Because we all have. <laughs> right? I hear it all the time. <laughs> Healing it, it anxiety. Even up for me I got your so. attention. I know I do. The rest of it, the rest of the title is Healing Anxiety, a Tibetan medicine guide to healing anxiety, stress, and PTSD. We could sure use that. And she, uh, Dr. Ryan received her MS and PhD from Oxford University, in not, not only in human biology, but in medical anthropology. So that's something. And mm. she also researched the efficacy of Tibetan and Asian medical treatments in Dharmasala, India. She studied alongside Collaborated, who's also mentioned on the cover of this book, they collaborated the book together, Dr. Jomling, who is the first female personal physician to the His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. So I cannot tell you, this is going to be a fascinating interview. I have her on the line from Massachusetts on the East Coast calling late at night. Hello, Dr. Ryan. Servette, thank you so much. Um, it's an honor to speak on your show. Um, and yes, anxiety is, I think that we all need this book now, including myself. You know, I'm a high-strung medical anthropologist, so. <laughs> yeah, I, um, you're going to yes, have to so. explain that term because I don't think a lot of people out there are familiar with medical anthropologists. I love that whole idea. What exactly yeah, well, technically does it yeah, mean? Yeah, so anthropology is the study of other cultures. And then when you have medical anthropology in front of it, you're studying um, other medical systems and whether they work or not, you know, right. or whether they, well, beyond that, you're looking at meaning and metaphor in Tibetan birth practices or mm -hmm. um, Nigerian drumming rituals um, for men post-adolescence, you know. Right. Um, so you're looking at healing, uh, how different uh, right. people yeah, heal different their own. cultures, yes. And, um, and, you know, Servette, it came about because what happened to me junior year abroad, I was in Kenya for the year, mm -hmm. and I was very, very sick. I had what turned out to be dengue fever. And um, oh, what happened it. was I walked up to my professor's cabin where we lived in the highlands of Kenya, and I knocked on his door, and I said, Professor Anderson, I'm really sick, and then I just threw up all over him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. And then that evening... I said, I need a doctor. And they, he said, well, there aren't any doctors here. We just use the mama down the road. She's going to help you. And um, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, who's that? You know. And then anyway, she gave me this horrific gruel. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a soup. It was a, it was a raw plant cold soup. Mm -hmm. And um, I got better. And there are no cures for dengue fever. No, and in the you West. know, I happen to know someone that had it, someone I was very close to, which is really unusual here in America. But yeah, isn't that funny? In California. Yeah. And, and so he was sick. He was in and out of the hospital for weeks, weeks before they, yeah, they couldn't figure it's bad. out. What it well, was. I was still sick, I will say. Yeah. It went on for about two weeks, but then the course was done. Mm -hmm. And what happens with dengue fever, you know, with the use of biomedicine is that. It um, it can come back and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So that really changed my whole life. I thought, you know, there are lots of different medical systems in the world with legitimate mm -hmm. um, options for taking care of ourselves, and I became very obsessed with different cultures and found well, that you could even do a PhD in this subject. Well, yes, you can, and it, it, it's ancient. These things have been around Forever. I mean, Tibetan med, I mean, I was born in Pakistan. So, I mean, granted, oh. I'm a British citizen, a Canadian citizen, and an American citizen. So I've grown up everywhere. Oh. But, I, but I have to tell you, I come from pure Pakistani parents. And, hmm. well, actually, there was no Pakistan when they were born. It was just India. I was the only one born in Pakistan because they're 
happen to be in Pakistan by then. But anyway, wow. that's another story. But I'm telling you, I know my name is, is really interesting because my uh, name means treasure because they didn't bury me because that's what they were doing with baby girls at the time. But I'm, I'm only saying that because Father's Day is coming and my Ow. birthday happens to be on Father's Day this year. So happy, happy Father's Day, Dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, he listens, he listens to the show, so I have to say that. But anyway, uh, d- the point of this is, is that, I, cause I want to hear more about you, but my mom yeah. put these things made with people back, I mean, years and years ago, like 25 years ago, when I got sick, it was mm. turmeric, uh, a paste she would, and yeah. now, you know, people are all into that, but nobody was back then. She would just make, yeah. when I was sick, she would make a paste, and and of this masala actually and then just like plaster it on me and i get better oh. and and same thing with the soupy things i mean she would just depending on what you had she <laughs> yeah. would just throw i think she was throwing weird animals and herbs in there i'm not sure but i never asked but you drank it and you felt better you just you know, and it's just was handed down from generation to generation to generation, you know? Yeah, and it's fascinating. And so, you know, so that you can pour over case histories, you know, that are from the 7th century, 8th century mm. in Tibetan medicine, in Chinese herbal medicine. And, you know, your mom, she probably knows Ayurvedic traditions, oh, yes. you know, mm-hmm. that are 2,000 years old that yes. work. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And... You know, what I find ama- amazing about it, just to give an anecdote for our listeners, um, mm-hmm. and then I'll, you know, I can get into Tibetan medicine, but really sort of one of the roots of Tibetan medicine is the, their herb tradition. And um, there's this wonderful story told to me by a scholar friend who's at the University of Maryland. He's a botanist. And he said, you know, Mary, plants are so intelligent. And in the old days, botanists used to say, how can we plunder the plant world? You know, how can we use them? Um, and he said, now, botanists, that you know, the research in, the, in, in botany now is so fascinating, and medicinal botany as well. Uh, you know, what are the plants trying to tell us? Mm. What do they know? Yes. And to give an example of this is that nettles, all right, mm-hmm. they grow all along the uh, north, east, seaboard along the I-95 corridor. You know, if you want to get from New York and go down to Florida for the winter, Mm -hmm. you get on 95 Mm -hmm. and you bomb down that huge road, right? Right. And there's a huge problem with a nettles infestation happening on both sides of the highway, right? And so over the years in the newspapers and, you know, in the Highway Department of Transportation, they're they're trying, you know, all these pesticides, are, and they're trying to mow down the nettles, but these virulent met- nettles keep growing back, and there's not a pesticide that can kill them. So all this funding goes into mowing down the nettles. Hmm. And then this botanist at the University of Maryland said, well, lo and behold, we found out that nettles, who for whatever reason migrated and came to enjoy living beside this one of the biggest highways in the United States, nettles turns out to be the greatest digester of benzene. As a plant, it is able to digest benzene, the, mm-hmm. you know, the exhaust coming right. out of cars, and um, have it break down into organic components into the soil. It can actually use it to breathe. Use wow. it, it can absorb it and make it non-toxic. Oh, that's so fascinating. And so... Um, you know, there's this whole intelligence of the earth that I think the ancients knew. Right. Um, and that you can still find, you know, glimmerings of that in Tibetan medicine and in your, your mother's remedies mm-hmm. all over the world. Right. I you mean, know? yeah, she just, uh, that's interesting. That's fascinating that the plants knew. The pl- I, But see, I totally agree with I'm I'm a tree hugger. And so, so. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me yeah. too. All that forest bathing, you know, it's yeah. so great for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how did you go from Oxford to, well, you went to Kenya and you got sick, and then you came, and then how did you end up in India in Dharamasala? Yeah, so um, awesome first position. I did a master's mm-hmm. in human biology, and that took me there with a very strict scientific efficacy study. 
um, looking at, you know, can we knew, okay, so I have to admit, you know, on a moral stance, um, it was difficult for me at the time, but I chose to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, the World Health Organization and a couple of sort of pharmaceutical companies, um, you know, they back up medical anthropologists to go into the field and say, hey, what's working in Tibetan medicine? Oh. You know, from a scientific viewpoint, and that. Mm-hmm. So my research was known for. They could sort of send me out as like the first scientific forager. You know, send Dr. Ryan far away, plop her in the middle of nowhere. She's only 25. She doesn't care, and um, <laughs> have her set up a simple scientific study and mm-hmm. see if something works or not. Give her yeah. a little funding. You know, mm-hmm. so that's sort of my job as a medical anthropologist with a biology background. So. Mm-hmm. So I'm in Dharamsala, and my first efficacy study was on hepatitis. And indeed, we could show um, that Tibetan medicine was very promising for the treatment of hepatitis. Hmm. Um, And then after that came home, um, the research program, it didn't work that well. But also, you know, during this PhD, I was there um, for five-month periods. Mm -hmm. Uh, for six years in a row. I I would leave during the winter. And so we did an overview of Tibetan medicine. I looked at over 1,600 patients with all kinds of illnesses Mm -hmm. with Dr. Lady Dadan. Um, And then we decided to do deeper research into treatments for arthritis in Tibetan medicine, did research with that together. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we did research into anxiety because... Uh, well, so I was funded by the World Health Organization to help Tibetan refugees with PTSD recover. And um, I applied to WHO and I said, you know, Tibetan medicine is for the Tibetan people. We're talking about the preservation of Tibetan culture here. These Tibetan refugees need their own medical system, their mm-hmm. own medical ways to Absolutely. Uh, take care of their PTSD as mm-hmm. refugees. And so I acted on behalf of Tibetan culture to bring aid money in for Tibetan doctors instead of aid money coming in for medical doctors coming and giving, I don't know, pills for PTSD. or. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it ended up being collaborative, actually. We had Western doctors and Tibetan medical doctors working together to treat these Tibetan refugees with PTSD, and it was really successful. Wow, good. We learned a lot about how incredible Tibetan medicine is for anxiety and PTSD. Mm-hmm. Well, good. So, um, that's so that was the beginning. St- yeah, that was the beginning. That's what started the book. I mean, you mentioned yeah. um, Dr., I guess she's a lady, Lady Dadan Jomling. Did I say her name correctly? Yes. Yeah, yeah. she's, yes, that's um, right. I think in, in the book somewhere you said, I wrote this down, that she could diagnose a patient's illness just by looking at three things their urine bag reading their pulses and looking at their tongue and you know yes. so it's that intuitive kind of you know part of ancient medicine to me is is that it, it's extremely intuitive as well i, I got off Indeed. subject here but it's true it just kind of i don't know why i thought of that but yeah. it's like yeah. And in terms of Tibetan medicine, I mean, so they do that urine analysis and it's really interesting. So um, you can take a Tibetan doctor into a nursing home, which happened with me, uh-huh. and that Tibetan doctor can look at the urine bag of these you know, elderly people in the nursing home, take their pulse at their wrist and look at their tongue uh-huh. and tell you what's wrong with them. And you said they and were then, almost always 99% of the time they're accurate. They're, They're right accur- on. accurate, and yeah. when that happened, that's when I vowed to really study Tibetan medicine, uh, you know, for the rest of my life to really understand what is this, how do they know this? It's impossible that they know it. Um, wow, yes. But you know, it isn't impossible, mm-hmm. and it's also, Servette, it's intuitive, but it's also, in a way, it's its own science. For example, okay, so they look at the tongue, right? They do mm-hmm. tongue diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Um, and you look at your tongue, it can have a coating on it, it can be very red, or it can be like big and flabby and kind of fall out of your mouth and that sort of thing. But think about what the tongue is, you know? Yeah. The, so, uh, the tongue's a muscle. It's the strongest right? muscle in a person's body too, isn't it? it oh, it could it be, is. I don't know. It actually is. Actually. Um, and, 
Oh, and <laughs> strange fact. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but think about it. So it's the only muscle in the body that we can see. Mm-hmm. But so when Tibetan doctors are looking at the tongue, mm-hmm. they're looking at the quality of the muscular tissue, the interstitial tissue. Ah. Um, so if the tongue is big and flabby and flops out of your mouth and it's really puffy, well, that shows that there's some edema in the muscular tissue so you're not processing water very well Mm. Um, and if there's a coating on the tongue well why is there a coating in the tongue that's showing that a lot of toxins are built up in the interstitial fluid you know we're not getting rid of you know if you have that thick white coating in the morning what does that mean you know Mm -hmm. that's sort of a buildup of toxins in the gastrointestinal alimentary canal but also in your muscular tissue all over Ooh, you know? Yeah, I thought it was just vodka. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, All but those it's ruffled true. potato chips that far, at that party. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's true. But no, yeah. it's true. You can look. But that's why it's called the, a medical practice. You know, even. It's yeah. be, you know, because even, even my mother knew things because they'd gone through things. They'd all birthed babies at home in, be, in oh, a bed. Yeah. You know, they all knew things that I would never know, and doctors didn't. You know, she, when I gave birth, she yelled at that doctor because he didn't get um, the anesthesiologist on time. So I gave birth with nothing, what, but which was wow. no fun. But she said, put a washcloth in her mouth now. She's going to bite through her tongue. And he never even thought of that. But she wow. knew. She knew. She just knew because she'd done it. You know, it's. Um, yeah. And she's not a doctor, but I think it's called a medical practice because of that reason. It's a practice. He had seen so many, you know, they've seen so yeah. many tongues. They can tell what's going on and then how to treat it, which brings us to the Tibetan medicine. Well, actually, you, I wanted yeah. to ask you something, too, because you picked anxiety, healing anxiety, which is like a national crisis right now medically. I think. Yeah. And you had your own personal uh, experience with that that brought you to the book as well, right? Yeah, yeah. And yes, and so what's interesting about anxiety and the mm-hmm. way Tibetan doctors look at it, mm-hmm. Servet, is there are different constitutions, right? So mm-hmm. it's not a one size fit all thing. Right. And my constitution, um, the way that I am, I'm sort of top heavy. You know, I overthink things. Um, I tend to be a workaholic, um, and uh, so I overwork. Um, I, I stop eating because I'm too interested in my work. Um, I'll have stress, um, but not get rid of it. I'll continue to work. You know, mm-hmm. just sort of this. Right. And that constitution, that constitutional type of um, person, um, and you can look at how they're built as well. I'm sort of, when I was younger anyway, of a narrow build. Uh, not too tall, darkish hair, um, sort of talks fast kind of person, um, mm-hmm. finishes other people's sentences and is very annoying in conversation, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> but anyway, make a long story short, when I was in Dharamsala working on a study before the the PTSD study, it was on the arthritis study for my PhD, I um, I, I got anxiety and it manifested with insomnia with um, sort of confused thinking, not being able to focus enough. And so what was happening was that I was doing longer days with my research Mm -hmm. and longer work hours because I wasn't focusing as well. And I had heart palpitations and a feeling of doom that was had no words to it, you know, and they call that wordless doom in Tibetan medicine. How old were you at that point? Then I was um, 25. I'm just curious because you were young to be going through that much anxiety, you know. Yes. But th- but you were. But, you know, I mean, that doesn't mean any uh, – age doesn't mean anything. Everybody's different. But, you know, as a young woman – Everybody's 20- different. And it really – you know, the roots of anxiety are – so in Tibetan medicine, there's mm-hmm. an energetic force called lung and it's they spell it in translation they spell it r and then capital l u n g lung mm-hmm. or l o o n g is the way you'd pronounce it and lung translates as wind right oh. and 
you know, when to understand wind, you know, environmentally out here in nature and within our own body, you know, wind is about movement. Like if you see the trees, right? Mm -hmm. You can't see wind, but you can see the effects of wind, right? The wind moves the trees, right? So wind is movement. And in the body, lung or wind is movement. So if the movement happens too fast, right? Mm -hmm. and movement is also circulation. If blood is circulating too fast and the heart is beating too fast, mm -hmm. that's the lung, That's and, and, and the wind is out of control, we say. And um, huh. there's a great, and there's a great illustrative story, um, and I think this will help the listeners understand the energetics of Tibetan medicine. You know, okay, so how can you understand lung? And you say, okay, so imagine that you yourself, your mind, you know, and like you, Mary, you, Servette, mm -hmm. we are who we are, right? And we're right. sitting on a horse. And okay. that horse's name is lung. Mm -hmm. All right? So in the body, our consciousness, our heart mind, rides a horse called lung. It it moves, our consciousness moves and has beingness throughout our body and sensations and touch and movement of fluids all because of lung, right? Right. Our consciousness rides lung. And um, so there's a story of this man, right? Oh, I'm sorry, it's not a man. Mm -hmm. um, it's a woman. And she's standing at Good. the side of the road and she's a tall, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, it's the lady doctor. It's Lady Dr. Jamling. She's standing at the side of the road and she's looking at this man and he's riding along on this horse and the horse comes up to them. And there's a puddle right by Dr. Dadan. And the horse and the rider, they just trample through the puddle and they're riding recklessly, recklessly around and they come back again and again. They're just going through the, the puddle. The rider can't control the horse, and he's lost the reins, and he's trying to not fall off. And then Dr. Jamling says to the rider, where are you going? Mm -hmm. And the rider, the person with anxiety, says, I don't know. Ask the horse. Ask Lung. Yeah. And so what that is a story of is that you've lost control of the wind force in your body, one of the vital forces. Right. And there are three main ones. There's lung, there's um, tipa, which is fire, right? And, you know, heats things up in the body. Mm -hmm. And bagan, which moisturizes and cool things, cools things in the body. Mm -hmm. So you've lost control of this horse, lung. Well, how do you get the reins back? You know, how do you right. get control of your mind? Like mm -hmm. your mind rides this energetic force. Well, how do you get control of it? You get control of it through diet, through mindfulness meditation practices, Mm -hmm. these Tibetan healing exercises that are in here in this book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, diet and then warm, wonderful, luxurious massage. Right. Um, there's incense you can buy because if you breathe in incense, in mm -hmm. Tibetan medicine we say that the mind is connected to the breath. Absolutely. So if you breathe deeply mm -hmm. and slowly, mm -hmm. the mind will calm down. Right. So they also have an incense that you breathe in to calm the lung down. Which, which what, what would it be? What, is it a special oh, the incense? blend? Yeah. I mean, I use lavender yes. for that. I use lavender for that. Oh, yeah. But, there are lots of different herbal incenses you can use for this. There is one particularly made for lung. Okay. Um, That's what it, that was my question. And yeah. it is made at Dr. Jamling's uh, monastery. Oh. And it's made from Tibetan medical texts. That were written. The recipe ah. comes from a four, from the let's see, it's about the 1400s. A modified recipe for oh long incense. And it's handmade, um, I'm sure, because I hand make handmade my right yeah. from her monastery, and you can find the address in my book. Okay. Um, the and, ad her address um, in, is in your book. Her how to contact her is in your book, right? Um, yes. Oh, okay. It is. Okay. Um, if you want, I'll give you the address over the phone right now. No, do it because this will air. People can uh, – This it's live right now, but it will go up on my YouTube channel, and people go back and listen to shows two or three times because they oh, miss things. Oh, great. So I'll just so. give you the address. Sure. It, yeah, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the address is Dr. Lady Dadon 
D A D H O N Jamling J A M L I N G, mm-hmm. and then it is the next line is Tashi T S and Tom A S H I Tashi, and then the next word is Chuling C H O E L I N G Monastery. Tashi Chuling Monastery. And then the next line is Jogiwara Road. Isn't that a great name? I love it. Jogiwara. So that is J-O-G-I-W-A-R-A Road. Jogiwara Road. And that is in McLeod, one word. And then the next word is Ganj, G-A-N-J. And then on the next line, you write Dharamsala, Mm -hmm. D-H-A-R-A-M, Dharam, and then Sala, S-A-L-A. The zip code on the same line, you write 176-219. Wow. And then underneath that, you write H-P, India, H period, P period, India, and that's Himachal Pradesh. Oh, H-I-M-A-C-H-A-L. Yeah. And what you do is you throw a check for $5 into an envelope and you say, Dear Dr. Dodden Jamling, I would like to have um, some of your incense. And she'll send you a couple of packs. And they're the real deal, and they're very hard to get. There's not an online store or anything like that. No, and that's Uh, even better. And there are a lot of fake ones. There's even fake ones of hers going around, and they're not the same. You really have to do it the old-timey way. Uh, No, I am personally going to do this with $10 because I know how hard it is to find the real deal. And and that, I I know, is the real deal. (laughs) Hmm? It's stinky stuff. It, yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, things from other cultures, foods and incense and stuff like that, they don't fit quite maybe within our sensibility. But, the, but, but boy, if you're anxious and you breathe in this incense, right. it's you the will real sleep deal. like a baby. And that's worth it then to have something smell pretty and then it doesn't work. It's just nonsense. Well, it yeah. smells pretty. But, you know, lavender will work. Um, lavender there's a very works. well-known one mm-hmm. from um, Ayurvedic medicine and also Japanese and, you know, it's, well, all over Asia. And that mm-hmm. is um, agar wood, A-G-A-R, agar mm-hmm. wood, um, aquilaria wood. Mm-hmm. Um, and, in fact, there are Tibetan herbal pills um, that c- contain shavings of this wood um, in them, herbal pills for anxiety. But you can use just the incense as well. Um, Right. And um, so that's one aspect of the Tibetan healing tradition is this incense. It helps. It's fabulous with a panic attack. Oh, um, good the incense. to know. But then in terms of daily practices, um, mm-hmm. you know, of course, if we all eat right and um, exercise and meditate every day, our anxiety is going to go from sort of 85% to you know, 5% easily. Right. But, you know, there's sort of a better way to do it that's not as hard, and that is to, in this book, we talk about different constitutions, mm-hmm. you know? Right, you just and explain if what you follow the diet was. for your constitution, uh-huh. well, um, y- that helps. your anxiety will be less as well. Absolutely. Well, Because you you're know. eating according to c- your constitution. And so in this book, I talk about the three main constitutions. Well, um, you were one, right? The one that you described. Yeah. You overthink yeah. and you, you know, you just, and you interrupt people and all that. And that, that basically described, <laughs> well, that basically described me. I even have dark hair. Yeah. The whole thing, you know? I mean, yeah. I'll stop yeah. eating when I'm really uh, stressed and busy and I'm a workaholic and Yes, yes, and, you were and, there, and we're warriors as well. You yes, know, we can exactly. over ruminate things, which is yeah, which is not good. So, so then for my particular type, I've I've read the book, so I know you have different types. Oh yeah, you of, know. Yeah, but tell people out there though there there are there are three different types of constitutions, and if you follow those diets, which I'm trying, I'm open to everything. Yeah. 
you know, I will get the incense and I'll try because, you know, I don't care if you live in this world in this day and age and in this country right now, you are likely going yeah. to be anxious at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah. the climate is so, you know, tenuous for everybody. Right. More so um, than you know, ever. We don't, I, you know, yeah, it's, it's sort it's of uncertainty really, breeds it, you know. Right. And the stress level I'm finding of people lately is through the roof. I don't remember. I, I see a lot of angry people. And I think the anger is coming up from fear. But then it's that all causes stress and, yeah. and, and anxiety as well. You yes, know? absolutely. And, and if there's anger... Um, mm-hmm. That also might be a, a type of that's that's also a constitutional type in a way, you know. So, mm-hmm. so you have these three constitutional type types. I mean, mm-hmm. so the Tipa constitution, you know, mm-hmm. sort of the basis of Tipa constitution is fire. You know, they're fiery. Mm-hmm. Um, when they're in imbalance, they can get angry. You know, um, right. they tend to be the Type A people. They're outdoorsy. They're running their marathons. They want to be CEO of their own company independent, um, they can be bossy and they can be belligerent and rude, um, but they're go-getters, they're going somewhere, you know. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And that type of constitution, yeah, right now I would say that they're, you know, everybody is going to be showing some more imbalance right now, I think, in terms of just politically what's going on, our economy, the, the, or on just the uncertainty of the times. You right. Know? Um, right. Uh, so then the Tipa constitution out of balance, they're going to be a little, they're going to be angry. You know, the Lung constitution, you and I, we're going to be sort of fearful and fretting and mm-hmm. have this bottomless worrying. pit feeling in our stomach, you know. Worrying. Um, worrying. Worrying. Yeah. <laughs> Just worrying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. It's true. Yeah, I get it. But then what's the third one? The the bang. Oh. Is it the? Yeah, bad gan. And that's my husband. We're oh. married. And, um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if he's my husband, obviously. Uh-huh, <laughs> but anyway, <good. laughs> back-end constitution, they're wonderful. Um, oh, good. They tend to the chubby side. Oh. You know? Mm-hmm. They're cuddly people. They like their food. They're very they're artistic. Comforting. In fact, my husband's a sculptor, you know? Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah. and um, But so the back-end types, highly intelligent, mm-hmm. but they're slow. Oh, yeah. They're not going to pick the idea up very right away. Mm-hmm. But their memories are deep and long, like an elephant. Tibetan doctors say, uh-huh. because once they know something, you know, say they're studying at school, they're the types. Once they know it, they'll know it for their whole lives. They won't mm-hmm. forget it. They have incredible memories. Uh, they're very loving people. They love their food. They mm-hmm. love to cuddle. They love their sensual pleasures. Uh-huh. They're um, and they move slowly. They're they're colder to the touch. You know, you've got the tipas running hot. They're a little sweaty. Right. Um, the lung constitution, us, you know, we can be a little dry. You know, we maybe need more moisturizer than others. Right. Um, but the back end constitution, they're unflappable. They're slow. They're wise. Mm-hmm. Um, they are sort of, if you think of the figure of the Buddha, right? He's a natural sort of uh, back end shape. Um, yeah. Do you and balance? now if back end gets, pardon? Go ahead. Go ahead. I interrupted. Go if, ahead. If this okay. constitution gets anxiety, uh-huh. they all have sort of different manifestations of anxiety mm-hmm. or lung imbalance, right? Right. And back in, if they get anxious, they're the worst ones of all. They're the ones that want to sort of commit themselves to a mental institution uh, yeah. with their anxiety. It's bad because they're usually very healthy and st- of stable mind. If they become imbalanced, it's bad. Um, so they really have to stick to their own kind of diet, the massage that works with them, with herbs that are, you know, sort of warm them up and get the circulation going more. Mm-hmm. Um, the back end constitution, they're the ones that actually really do need cardio uh, every day to really warm up their cold, sluggish constitution, you know. Right. Um, do you, you and your husband balance each other out well? For, yes, I mean, good. very well. I would well. think so because I, well. I, I couldn't be married to someone just like me. Do you know? I mean, I, Oh God, I, mean, I would drive myself crazy. Well, also lung, pe- lung people, you and I, uh-huh. this may not be true for you. It is true for me. Uh-huh. They have a deep self-loathing. 
<laughs> so they wouldn't marry themselves. No, you know? yeah. No, but the wonderful I... thing about the lung constitution, that self-loathing, is they're looking at themselves. They're usually growing. You'll you know you'll see them at self-help groups and. Right. You know, they're willing to be vulnerable with themselves and others as well. You know, right. it's, it's an interesting constitution. You Gosh, know, this is all Whereas really Whereas people constitution, mm-hmm. they're always right. You know, they're mm-hmm. the leader. They're the head of the pack. They're the new age guru. They're teaching the class, you know. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Sort, well, of, sort of type. Yeah, this is all really fascinating. The name of the book is Healing Anxiety, a Tibetan Medicine Guide to Healing Anxiety, Stress, and PTSD. And we're on the line here with Dr. Mary Ryan that wrote it. And um, I'm going to open the lines for callers to call in. We've passed the halfway mark already. Uh, and so now we're running okay. out of time. So if anybody has a question about how to heal their anxiety, and I know you do, so don't lie. Call in. <laughs> 949-313-8880. Again, it's 949-313-8880. We all have some anxiety in us or stress or even PTSD that she can help you with. Then call in and talk to Dr. Mary Ryan about it. We've had some issues with our calling in callers. Um, the producers of the show said okay. they fixed it, but... We will wing it if they haven't. So please do call in and um, ask away because I know then after the show I get 25, 30, 40, 50 emails like I wanted to ask this and then it's too late. So tell me, Mary, how can, pe- can people get a hold of you? Do you do sessions with people about this or or what, I what do. are you doing? Okay, good. How can they find you? They can find me by going to the web and looking up www.bluedragonapothecary.com. And you'll see me under practitioners there. I'm the founder of an apothecary in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Um, And we have over 300 organic, domestically, or, or they're domestically grown and hopefully organic herbs from the Ayurvedic, Chinese, and Western and Mm. Native traditions. Oh, great. And it's called bluedragonapothecary.com? Yes. Did I get it right? Good. And you will find me there. Okay, good. Now, find you there to not only just to to set up individual appointments. Are you doing workshops, seminars? Are you doing that as well? Are you out traveling? Yeah, I'll be doing that. I take a break in the summer, so in the fall, have a look, keep an eye out for our website and um, see what we're up to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not. This summer we're doing different courses, one on um, CBD oil mm-hmm. um, and its benefits. So different practitioners give different courses. I'll be there in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, and people can also just email me. My email is there on the okay. web. and. Good. Is the Mary book? at bluedragonapothecary.com if they have any questions. Okay, Mary at bluedragonapothecary.com. So the questions you're not yes. calling in with now, you can send her <laughs> that email address. I know people <laughs> yeah, do this no, all the time because an hour, that, no. they, they just think of it. Because now we're running, we're running out of time. We barely have 20 minutes, not even 15 left here. So mm. it's like, and then we run out of time. So I know they can always reach you at Mary at blue dragon apothecary.com. And the name of the book again is healing anxiety, a Tibetan medicine guide to healing anxiety, stress and PTSD. Is that also at the same blue dragon apothecary.com as well? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure it's on Amazon as well. And, and, other and on Amazon, yes. right? So they can get it uh, multiple places, and the book is worth it because it gets into greater detail than we can possibly do in an hour. I could talk to you, Mary, for hours and hours and hours, like eight hours, and we still wouldn't hit it all because there's a lot of information in the book. But if you suffer from <laughs> yeah. anxiety at all, it really does help. I mean, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, what controls us? I mean, I always think of it as, um, you know, like I tell people, if you don't meditate, it's like a, it's like a bull. Your mind will be like a bull in a china shop. It's just gonna go where you know. You have to have some kind of mindfulness 
meditation practice. But what most people, because I really push that, I really do. I meditate every day mm. no matter what. I can't not. If I don't meditate in the morning, first thing in the morning, I am a wreck by noon, period. Absolutely. I, just, I don't yeah. know how I'd live without it. I, I can't live without it. So, And people tell me all the time, I don't have time to meditate. And I'm like, well, do you have time to like brush your teeth? <laughs> it's like you don't, you don't say that about things. It's flossing your brain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't. I have to meditate. But the other side of this is, is a lot of people aren't talking about diet and the other aspects that can also help anxiety. And speaking of which, is there yeah. like for all three of the types, is there just spe- things you can do that help the eat that will help any type of anxiety? Like, is it, um, I don't know, is it ge- just in general, drinking more water, uh, eating, having, right. you know, just that type um, of thing? Right. Okay. Well, first of all, there's a wonderful tea called Tulsi tea. Mm. And it won't happen overnight, um, but if you drink a cup of Tulsi tea every night, um, that helps to balance the three humors. And um, it's considered one of the perfect teas for keeping mm-hmm. the three humors balanced. And I find that as a long-term sort of routine thing to do to keep anxiety at bay, mm-hmm. um, it really works. Um, in terms of curing anxiety, um, well, first of all, I always like to tell people on a show that if you're in the middle of a panic attack, Mm-hmm. In Tibetan medicine, they would say immediately drop everything and do 20 push-ups. <laughs> oh, well, really? not really, but they say do prostrations to the Buddha, which are very similar to push-ups. And what that is oh. is it, you're just you know drop, do 20, and get the circulation of the chest energy moving in as fast and as violent. A, a way that you can, and that's a way that you actually you begin to anchor the lung through po- proper uh, guided circulation of blood through the vessels. You know when you work out, right? How the blood starts to circulate and you begin to sweat. Mm-hmm. Well, that helps to move the stuck lung, the stuck wind energy mm-hmm. that's wreaking this havoc in your mind, um, the stagnation of lung in different areas the overflowing of lung in different areas, that immediate uh, circulatory push can stop a panic attack. Mm-hmm. That's um, good And that know. comes from Tibetan medicine. That's, you know, yeah. hundreds of centuries of old. Drop and um, give me 20, right? Drop me 20. Well, um, just, can you do it with breathing? Because I, I, I don't really have yes. like full-out panic attacks, but if I'm going to go be on television or something live television especially, I can't do 20 sit push-ups, and I never knew to do that. But what I do do right before mm. anything is I deep breathe. I just do a deep yeah. breathing exercise that's, that's sort Absolutely. of, um, you know, funny Absolutely. kind of way, just and like doing push-ups. And they recommend that you count in. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah so I that count, you count in. count in to seven. Uh-huh. Hold for seven, seven and, and then breathe, breathe out. out for seven. And then I yeah. do six, five, four, three, two, one. That's how I do it. I actually oh, start. Wow. Sometimes I yeah. start. And with, it works, right? Yeah, it works. It works. It works even when I'm just having a stressful moment where I just want to kill somebody. Not really. Yeah. But, you know, when you just, <laughs> you know, when something happens in your life and you just want to like, you know, I, I am deep res- Deeply spiritual, but there's nothing spiritual about being a doormat. And sometimes I just want to knock you with a left hook, and I won't. But I just want to, and I will take. Oh, five, so I will I love walk that. away. I will turn around, walk away, and I will do that. I will start with seven, and and breathe in to seven, hold it, breathe out to seven, and then I do six, five, four, three, two, one. And yeah. by the time I get to one, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm yeah. Not gonna, Absolutely. I I, I understand how that can work because really, you know, you're breathing in Mm -hmm. air Mm -hmm. and um, it catches the mind, you know. Right. Um, The mind is connected to the breath. Right. Also, you have to... The breath is connected to the mind. Right. You have to focus on 
breathing in to seven and holding it for seven and breathing out. So your mind gets occupied, you know? You can't. Yeah. It's, it's just like you can't really, you can't have two thoughts at once. So if you're being grateful or in gratitude, yeah. you can't be stressed at the same time. But if you can't so hold true. that, you can't stay there. That's why meditation is so important to me because you, oh, you, yeah. you, you bring your mind to a different level of, you know, it's a different space. And, and when you do that, it, it, you can't possibly be nuts at the same time. You have to calm down that monkey mind. You know, you used a horse, but it's the same thing. You know, it's that, that, yeah. that energy that's running amok that you have to get control of. Whether it's fire, or you've wind. got to rein in. Yeah, yeah, you have to rein it in. You have to get a get a hold of it, and and that's yeah. So key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, so there's. I agree with you. There's, you know, that the mind, the um, breath connected uh-huh. to the mind, and they've got the incense. You know, there's the incense, and right. then well, the meditation, tea. of course. Um, the Tulsi tea. Where do you get that? Do you get it? Can you get it anywhere? Can oh, people get that in? Oh yeah, you can get it at any um, Trader uh, Joe's natural food store. <laughs> oh yeah, Trader Joe's has it. Cool, that's um, it. Because mm-hmm. people don't the huge corporation Whole Foods. Lots of all those right. co-ops have them. Right, because people don't do things when it's another step sometimes, and if it's easy, yeah. Tulsi tea. Do you drink it every day? I didn't drink it today, but I, I'll drink it tomorrow. Oh, I'm okay. trying to think. I had some yesterday, yeah. So do, does it um, keep you calm? Might have some tonight before bed. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Well, there you go. Does it keep you calm? Does it calm you down? Yes. Yes, and so um, Tulsi, uh, you will see this in front of Tibetan Buddhist monasteries, um, also uh-huh. in, in front of people's homes. The Tulsi tea in, in India, you mostly see it in northern India now. And I, I think it also is in Ayurvedic medicine, which is one of the roots of Tibetan medicine. They're very related. Uh-huh. The Tulsi tea is extremely aromatic. It's, to me, it's sort of a combination of cinnamon and basil, if those tastes huh. were to be combined. Maybe cinnamon, basil, and rose all mixed together. Wow. It's incredibly aromatic and beautiful. Well, I'm going to try um, it. I will. They say what it does is it awakens you. Mm-hmm. And yet settles you at the same time. And they they recommend that you drink the Tulsi tea before you meditate or do the Tibetan healing exercises or right, right. that sort of thing. Uh, I have a caller. Yeah. I have a caller who called in but didn't call in. She called in via text. So here's the okay. new age of, of, of everything here. She's saying, why does she believe the Tibetan push-ups blood flow are better than breathing exercise or does she there you go that's a good question i i i'm not going to answer that's a good question i (laughs) i would say that both work for a panic attack Mm -hmm. and that the um tibetan uh you know prostrations that they do to the medicine buddha in the traditional texts Mm -hmm. similar to the push-ups I think that's a more violent action than you can take than breathing. Mm-hmm. You know, that the breath work really does work. Um, but if that's not working for someone who's, you know, needs a, a stronger thing, then the prostrations work, the push-ups. Right. And then another thing you can do is, and it's in my book, is a really thorough head roll. Mm-hmm. Um, all about unblocking those lung channels that are sort of running amok, right, um, and calming the brain down. Okay. Doing the slow head roll, dropping your head down onto your chin and then rolling your head all the way around. There you go. Um, that helps also with yes. anxiety. Yes, and that, that helps with a lot, not just a panic attack, but when you're just str- like, you know, when you want to deck somebody, you just need to stop, walk away, breathe, do push-ups, roll your neck, whatever. These are all key yeah. good <laughs> I mean, panic attacks are horror. I know people that have had them. This is a serious issue. It is. So anything yeah. that can help that is wonderful. But all of these things just help stress in general and anxiety in general because we get our minds just go run them. It's run amok. Like I said, we need things. We need tools in the toolbox 
to help with that Absolutely. because it makes you live longer. It keeps you healthier. Anxiety and stress, I think, are the number one cause, and PTSD too, are the number one cause of most disease. And I think causes of cancer, things like that. So I think it's it's yeah. worth it's worth for us to understand this. And this book is an excellent way to get a grip on that. It's called Healing Anxiety, a Tibetan Medicine Guide to Healing Anxiety, Stress and PTSD. And it's written by Dr. Mary Ryan, who we're talking to right now. And I, I do, I think stress I think str- you know, I have a a friend who is ninety five years old and in great shape, sharp as a whip. I used to call mm. her. I used to call her a pistol because she, she was just really sharp. It just could still function, doing everything herself, really with it. Mind sharp as. And I asked her the secret to this, and she said, mm. all she said to me is, "I have to tell you something. In my ninety-five years that I've been alive, which means she has lived through wars." And she's American, was American. Gosh. She's lived through, she lived through World War II and all of that. But she said, I never worry. That's, that was her answer. Really? To, her answer to me was, I have never worried about anything. <laughs> ever. Uh. She said, I just really understood for some reason from day one that I really had no control and that it was okay. And everything was going to work out the way it was going to work out. Didn't matter anyway. So I was never going to worry about it. And she said she never did. And that was her Gosh. secret. So there's something to be yes. said. She just did it naturally. But n- most of us can't do that. We do need tools. And this book is really great for the. We're out of time. We did have a caller call in on a text. <laughs> Text us, which is I love awesome. That. I love that too because really I think great. it's awesome, and I and I think that it's yes. So I just this was a great. I can't. Uh, I don't want to let you go. I think <laughs> we oh, we'll keep talking. That, this has for, been really wonderful. Yeah, I wanted also to say that um, you know, with regards to that caller too, that um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the mind or no, the story of your your friend. You know, the mind affects the body. Most definitely. Right. You know, right. it can affect Absolutely. it in a positive way. And I think right. that's some of the tools that's, or that's here in this book is how to use your mind as a positive tool for healing. Right. Um, Works both and, ways. You know, the mind affects the body. The body mm-hmm. affects the mind. Yeah, both they're are interconnected. True. I, well, and I would add the spirit, too, because I think they're all three connected. So uh, because I think they're part true. of the reason that she didn't worry was because she meditated and had spiritual connection, you know? So I think the three mm. together though, because there, yeah, cause I mean, oh, I never worry is an easy line to throw out there, but I knew there was something that kept her from worrying too. And that was her, her spiritual constitution, her convictions. So, um, it, but it is, it's all interconnected. Absolutely. You can't have one without the other. You know, it's going to be, they have to be in balance, just like balancing moon and, or, and these energies within us. We have to keep them back. Ba- Once things get out of balance, something goes wrong. I, you know, I think. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Servette, before I forget, there is the, we do have our own website. The publishers made a website for the book if people want information there. Um, Good. You know, if they're curious. What, what is um, it? Called healinganxiety.com. Well, there oh, you sorry, go. Oh, sorry, healinganxietybook.com. Okay, good, because I was going to say, how did they get healinganxiety.com? That must have been hard. Yeah, that's healing, too much, right? <laughs> healing anxiety healing book. Anxiety. Healing book. Anxiety book. That's pretty good. Dot com yeah. is pretty darn good. So you yeah. have given us a ton of information. I so enjoyed this show. I If you do another book or if we just need to hear more about it, we will have you back. If there's an, an – an, you know, anxiety is a subject I could just – we could – I, everybody could use it. So I, I can't thank you enough. <laughs> You've been a wonderful guest. And you're calling from Massachusetts, so I know it's late, and I appreciate that you t- took the time tonight to call in. 
and give us all this wonderful information. Aww. And for people out there that want more healing anxiety, a Tibetan medicine guide to healing anxiety, stress, and PTSD, you can also reach Dr. Mary Ryan at mary at blue dragon apothecary.com. And if you've missed any of that, you can listen to the show again on my YouTube channel. And thank you, Mary. I really enjoyed this. Thanks for being with us today. Servette, thank you, and I'll listen to your show. I, I love great. it. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. You take care of yourself, yeah, man. It's great to I, find you. All right, you too. We'll Bye-bye. talk soon, I'm sure. Thanks. And you're welcome. That was Dr. Mary Ryan. I think I just cut her off. She was saying you're welcome, which is lovely. She's welcome, too. She was great. I She's She's got a ton of knowledge, ton of knowledge on this subject. And it's in the book. So... If you're so inclined, Tibetan medicine has been around for thousands and thousands of years. Chinese herbal medicine, Tibetan Tibetan medicine, acupuncture. I mean, she just, she's got a grasp on all of this. And if you suffer from anxiety in the very least, I mean, even a little, this is worth it. I think it's a, it's a wonderful book. Pick it up. I, um, you can go to my website too. It's servetthassan.com, S-E-R-V-E-T-H-A-S-A-N.com. You can email me at servette at servetthassan.com. I'm not spelling it again. You either got it or you didn't. I have workshops and I'm going to take a break for the summer as well. I am traveling next, uh, I am going to be in, uh, Park City, Utah, but I am, I'm doing a private workshop there so it's not open to the public so uh other other ones will go up on my website you can find me any any information you want there i am available for private consultations all of my books are on my website tune them in turn them on the intuitive heart of romance and the last one life in transition they're all on there i am going to start blogging again i know said i know i keep saying that i am not lying i promise i will and I'll do it soon. I just want to do it right. And I want to do something uh, heart, heartfelt and meaningful, even if it's just meaningful to me. So I'm going to take my time and come up with something I really enjoy doing. I loved doing memos from my higher self. And I, I did one every single day last year from January 1st to the very last day of the year. And I kept my promise there. And that was really interesting and opening, uh, mind opening for me. And it did shift my consciousness. So, um, and there's still, you can still go back and read those if you haven't. Um, but I'm going to do something different this time. So I will keep you all posted. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be amazing. I have a really interesting guest next week. Her name is Gabrielle Myers. And it's the first time I'm actually going to have... It's, it's fiction, but it's sort of a memoir. So it's more not, it, 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 it's fiction though. So anyway, it's called Hive Mind, H-I-V-E-M-I-N-D hyphen, H-I-V-E hyphen M-I-N-D, which is about bees, but it is a memoir and it's by Gabrielle Myers. She's fascinating and she, it's about stories, uh, about her going it anyway you gotta this is interesting because it changed her life but it's not just about a story of her life it's about the stories that we tell about our lives which is even more fascinating and she's she's a she's a wonderful young woman i can't wait to have her on and i like doing something different it's going to be an amazing show what she did is she tapped into her true self and you know that i always talk about this you have to be you to the full because that is what's truly beautiful and that's what makes your life work and that's what made her life so fascinating and what made her write this book and it's awesome and it's doing exceptionally well so anyway stay tuned for that next sunday on intuitive inc thank you for tuning in again be you to the full because that is what's truly beautiful and join me next week and thank you very much for listening take care everybody bless you Bye.